Right. So we have our last presenter coming up, Alvaro Buendia. Uh, it's going to take him a few minutes to get set up, so I wanted to jump in a minute ago to tell you a little bit about uh, the cool thing about this layering system. What always happens in production is a piece like this, like when he was showing you how the head will be bigger or the head will be smaller, uh, a lot of times art directors, they constantly be like, oh, just pull this point here, make it bigger, and now make this one smaller. Oh, I thought I saw one two days ago where the head was way larger. And in a traditional sense, when we're doing this out of some of our other packages, uh, we'll have to create that. And we send them a screenshot, and then maybe two hours later, we get a reply. Or it could even be a day. And here, we can just really quickly, iteratively use a layer system or others to get the kind of feedback we need to move on. And that's super crucial in a production pipeline to be able to move that quickly and have our direction to prove what you want to do. And, and actually, this is what Eddie used on this. He was able to sit down pretty quickly within about an hour or so with an art director to prove something that could normally take a couple days to do. And uh, just to recap, um, Kenson, he showed you how we can do a lot of the high resolution detail in sculpting. And Alvaro is going to focus more about those first stages in ZBrush when you start without any base meshes and how you can quickly get some good forms using a lot of the new tools from 405 and 406, including some of the ZR mesh function, uh, functions. And he's also going to be focusing on the Ultralisk. And if you guys remember from the cinematic, the Ultralisk was that huge creature running down the street that was smashing the siege tanks and, and just causing all sorts of destruction. Um, and I guess uh, some other interesting stuff about Alvaro, like Kenson, he loves doing monsters, loves doing creatures, and he just grown up doing this, and he's just very natural at it. So I think first off, he'll probably show you a couple of his uh, professional images and his uh, personal art images from some of the work that he's done, and we'll leave it from there. All right, can, uh, can everybody hear me? Hello. Um, so, my name is Alvaro. I've been an investor for about six years. Um, I'm, a, I'm originally from Mexico. I'm the first Mexican in, in Blizzard Cinematics, which is not as exciting as being the first Korean. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I didn't cry when I saw Blizzard Cinematics, but it was close. Uh, but I'm always crying on the inside, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyways, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of Im images that, uh, that uh, I do in ZBrush. This is personal, personal stuff that is a little bit different from what I do in, in, in uh, Blizzard. It's more, um, more of an illustration-like stuff that I've been doing lately. Uh, this is all, all ZBrush, like all ZBrush and Photoshop. You know? um, it's all from BBR, BBR renders. Uh, some will do it. So those are fun to sculpt. And uh, some work at. No, I don't ask. I have no idea. Um, another guy with, a, with heavy armor. Um, here's a self portrait. Uh, I had a few pants less in there. Uh, there's another guy, another old guy. Um, it's just like in a study for armor. And um, I was using the. Uh, in, this is the first time that I use the insert uh, brushes, just to, you know, just to see what I, what I can do with like uh, stuff that is just inside the brush. I didn't create my own in this in this one. Uh, this is just a quick study. Like we we. That blizzard always do like a, like a two three hour studies and uh, we use different themes so it's like oh we did, did, today we're gonna just do like a, our own version of a monster or whatever so a classical monster so I chose Mr Hyde you know this is uh, some creature that they could inspire on battle toads uh, but it's also like inspired on an Andrew Dice Play so it's gonna we're Kind of a weird mixture there. Um, this is another old model that I, uh, that I did a while ago. And um, another monkey. Uh, it's a big. Um, so this is just the studies that I've been doing in, in, in uh, my own free time. Uh, but 
they're, they're all paint over, so there's no textures or anything. Um, so I think here's me trying to make it like a lot more uh, 2D looking, but it's the uh, same thing, all, all 3D. So I'm just gonna scroll through this uh, fast. Um, that'll be it for my personal work. Um, just wanted to get, uh, get you guys familiar with some of the personal stuff that I do. But now, to the front, front part, I'm, uh, I'm going to show you some of the uh, creatures that I sculpted in, uh, in Seabridge for uh, Heart of the Swarm. Here's the, um, here's the Nidus work, uh, the, the Nidus Swarm. Um, it's, uh, I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the concept in a second. So, uh, here's the texture version. Eddie Kim, uh, very talented uh, texture artist, he uh, textured it. Uh, here's the paint over. Uh, they took, uh, from Jonathan Ruby took my uh, model and uh, did some quick, uh, quick uh, mock up of what uh, the final texture will look like. Here's the, uh, the image that I used as reference. I don't know what the concept artist used as reference, but this is what I used. Um, so, uh, here's uh, the, the uh, cert. Um, this, this model was particularly fun because uh, I I uh, grabbed the, the model that they had from in-game and uh, that's basically like the, I had a very basic uh, concept and uh, most of it I, I, I go to model it model slash concept of myself so that was, a, that was a fun part, you know, so it was more, a little bit more creative to, to, uh, to sculpt. Um, in this, uh, in this uh, cinematic, um, we had, we uh, had um, Seabrush 3, I believe, release 5, about, I think. So uh, we didn't have uh, any of the cool, really, really cool uh, stuff that they came up, came up with, uh, with David, which is uh, zero measure or uh, like um, uh, edge, uh, edge loop up. Uh, by groups, uh, a lot of like a, a lot of uh, brushes they didn't have, so that's a little bit like uh, longer of a process that if I did it now. So, uh, but uh, the way I did this one was with uh, with C spheres, and then uh, I sculpted on top of the C spheres. Then I brought it onto a different server and retopped it, and then I brought it back and sculpted. Uh, I mean, and uh, projected and re-sculpted, just basically. Uh, did a surface detail for it. Here's uh, how it looks in the cinematic. Jonathan Ruby uh, did uh, some paint overs of the of the sculpt uh, to show how the uh, show how the uh, scale will uh, will be represented on the on the, on the cinematic. So he just has fun. He like he likes doing really cool stuff like this. Like, Putting uh, like uh, things that we know, and we have sort of sort of an idea of what the scale is. So that gives like mentally a better idea of how big is the ultra. The ultra. This is an inspiration or a concept that I got. Uh, the the, uh, the final concept is pretty different, but we use this as like a, kind of like a flavor of the concept. Um, here's another uh, paint over, and uh, he's, uh, he's just indicating what the surface wants, wants it to look like. Here's the um, here's the cinematic uh, final concept uh, that uh, Bernie Kane did. Um, I use this as an overall like um, representation of how it, like uh, I use this just to get an idea of how uh, how the uh, overall character looks like. But um, at, at the end, he helped me uh, with a very 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 useful uh, ortho that I'm going to be using for uh, for this demo. So uh, first, I'm going to select this. And it is uh, this link. 
I'm gonna put this in the back. You guys see, uh, we'll see why in a second. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring the texture over here on the, on the texture menu. I'm going to import this, uh, this image that I just showed you. And, uh, and now I'm going to just create a simple plane here in ZRush. Uh, you, you can see that. Uh, Polymesh well, trees, uh, Zbrush comes with planar and uh, ring. You can start many things from uh, all these primitives. So I'm gonna select the plane. Um, he has basic UV already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the image, the, the image that I just showed you over here. You're gonna you're gonna import it over there, but you're gonna find it here on the text under your sub tool menu. Texture, the click on the uh, back and then you're gonna find it here. So now you see that the image is there. Uh, but it's stretched. I could go on Photoshop and, um, and fix it there so it fits the, uh, the perfect square. But uh, to save time, what I'm going to do is, uh, as you see, my my image is in the backwards. So I'm gonna use uh, the see-through option here. So this is gonna allow me to match the um, match the concept. So what I'm going to do now, uh, you can see that uh, the mesh is not uh, not high enough to, for me to. I'm gonna I need to need a, do a mask uh, around the. Uh, what I'm gonna be the demo, demo in is this claw here, and I'm. Uh, and um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go on geometry and I'm going to subdivide it a bunch of times. I'm going to delete the lower mesh. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's super high. And um, now that I have enough uh, geometry to, to do a mask, um, I can uh, go and press control and uh, start filling it in. Basically. So, uh, I'm gonna do it really quick. It doesn't have to be very precise. Just, just uh, good enough so it, really, it has a overall representation of the of the claw shape. So, as quick as I can. So this is gonna make a. If I turn off my te turn off my texture, you can uh, you can see that uh, create a uh, poly group and uh, edge loop around around the mask. So this is gonna allow me to hide this and go on uh, geometry and uh, modify topology and delete hidden. And that's gonna delete what I uh, what I what was hidden. The way I hit it, by the way, was uh, Control Shift, and then just click on the on the poly group that you want to uh, isolate. So now that I do this, I can uh, you see that the texture remains in there, so that's it's going to become handy later on. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mask this. I'm gonna go on sub two on uh, yeah sub two sub, uh, sub two and then just extract. So as you can see the the default thickness is a little bit too thin for what I need. So I'm gonna go thicker, extract, uh, and then accept. Okay. And there's a pepper. I don't know why 
Mexican bacon liver is not helping my case. But, uh, as you can see, the, uh, I'm still on the Bronx up to, so this is like this is where, where it's gonna become my reference uh, sub two. I'm gonna put it on the back. Uh, I'm gonna press shift so this becomes straight, and I'm gonna move it back. So that way I have free reference right there. If I turn on the texture, there you go. Perfect reference. Uh, so now I can go on the actual uh, sub tool that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna smooth it a little bit. So, as you can see, the, um, the shape is okay on the side, but then the front is very, very, uh, very flat. So, to get a better, better idea of uh, the curvature that I need, I'm going to go to back to the front console, which is not a uh, very exact, but it will help me, you know, get an idea. So I'm gonna go on uh, see through again. I'm gonna go here. And then I'm gonna try to shape it based on the front, uh, based on the. So on the uh, on the side view, as you can see, the, it looks good, but uh, the air director wanted it a lot more uh, spiky. So this is a very uh, handy tool for when you need very spiky stuff. And if you want to make it even more uh, even more even more uh, sharp, you can go on a curve and turn it back a curve, and then you can smooth it. And you see that you can make very sharp stuff. And then I'm gonna go on bulge. I'm gonna go on template, inflate right there. I'm gonna give it a little more volume. And uh, this is the Nike logo. So now I'm gonna shift a little more towards this version. It's gonna be a little tweaking, you know, until you want, you know, until you get exa exactly what you need. As you can see in here, uh, I made some, uh, add some holes when I uh, when I made my, my mask. I didn't uh, feel out of the way, but it's okay. I'll be able to, be able to fix it uh, with Dynamesh. So what I'm going to do first is I'm, I'm going to uh, grab uh, the damn brush and I'm going to do the stepping. I'm going to semi-sculpt it a little bit. I'm going to go to two on depth. I'm just going to put the, enough uh, volume for what I need when I uh, resurface it. So. Uh, for the first stage, I think this, this should be okay. So I'm gonna go on Dynamesh, and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna get rid of these holes and uh, make the mesh a little bit more uh, friendly for uh, for sculpt. So then geometry, and then you go on Dynamesh. I'm gonna make the resolution a bit lower, like uh, 96 Dynamesh. So there you go. Uh, now the holes are there. I'm going to make it a little bit higher So 
just, uh, just have a little bit more uh, geometry to it. Put the volume that I couldn't with the other mesh. So, of course, I'm doing it very rough because you know, it's a short demo. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on zero measure, which is really, really awesome. And uh, I'm going to press. Before I go on zero measure, I'm going to. I'm gonna see what it does first, just to get an overall idea. See how the, the tool uh, represents the, the uh, curvature right of that without me indicating what uh, directions I want. So there you go. Um, so you get a pretty clean mesh right of that. Um, so if you want a little bit more control, uh, what you can do is you can go on zero uh, metric guides and uh, you want to indicate more uh, specifically where your curves you want them to, you want to, uh, to flow, you know. It's gonna make your life easier later on when you, know, and you bring it into whatever software you are used to for the modeling and uh, it's gonna save you a lot of time. So you measure you'll see that the mesh is going a little bit more towards the the curves that I indicated. You can use your judgment or like if you're if you're working on uh, on production on something for production, you can ask uh, anybody who's rigging the model. You know, they want something that's more specific. And as you can see, the outer lines are going towards the uh, the direction that I want. So uh, I'm going to smooth this a little bit here. I'm going to shape it a little bit better. Um, now also if you want uh, more specific uh, instruction, instructions, uh, you can uh, go on your, uh, your uh, brush and then uh, select the lasso. And, Control will uh, to the negative um, uh, so you can see we have uh, this you know chunk of geometry that I want uh, some loops. Uh, I want some loops in there, so I'm gonna go what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on edge loop and I'm just gonna and you can do this as many times as you want. And uh, it creates polygroups, so if you want to isolate those loops and then just create more loops inside, you can go here and just repeat as many as that times as you want. And then uh, when you smooth, you, you have a very uh, good start for a spike. So now you can uh, go on your. Uh, on your uh, Transpose and uh, extrude it. You can move it or uh, pinch it uh, to make the, the end smaller. So, uh, once I hide this, you can see that uh, it's getting a, a better spike in shape. Now, uh, when I sculpt, 
the, um, the spike that I do here is going to hold up the, uh, my, my scope way better than if I uh, just uh, pull out the geometry and I'm not going to get any wear after artifacts or anything. So this is really, 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 really helpful uh, for when you're doing production stuff. You know? uh, so I'm going to bring the ultralisk. Like the, um, the actual skull that I did uh, back, back for a uh, swarm, and, uh, and there I'm gonna, I'm gonna just one second, so it looks. So I'm gonna select the part that I sculpted for you guys. Well, that I the base mesh. Um, so let's uh, suppose that I sculpted that on top, on top of, my, of what I did. You know. So what I'm gonna do. Uh, this is a high res mesh. I'm gonna go and reconstruct. So it's gonna allow me to go to uh, my lower subdivision. So in case you have. Uh, Mesh from uh, from a different like ZBrush version or for, for, from a, a different software or whatever, uh, you can bring a reconstructor like, uh, as long as the uh, geometry screen. You know? so this uh, level has enough uh, geometry. No, no informa enough information for me to work surface, so I'm gonna go on geometry, I mean, uh, no, no, sorry, a little sub tool. On top of the duplicators, and I'm gonna go on geometry and uh, play higher. And then, uh, pop up system shows. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, I was gonna show the. Uh, First of division and you know, the zero measure is the same thing, so it should be good enough. So thank you guys for uh, listening. Uh, any, any questions?